wonder how jerseys in general or NBA jerseys in specific became a part of streetwear. Today, the NBA and the NFL are a lot more willing to get adventurous with their uniform designs. And the reason for this is merchandising. These days, teams are working with fashion designers to come up with more eye-catching designs. And the NBA even has their city series, all as a way to sell more merch to their fan base. But did you know that there was a time when sports fans did not wear shirts repping their favorite teams? Or better yet, how did jerseys become a part of streetwear before falling off and not being so much of a part and then kind of coming back? Well, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com and in today's video, we'll cover the rise and fall and sort of rise again of NBA jerseys and streetwear. But before we get started, don't forget to smash that like button. Liking the video is the only way to help a small channel like mine grow to be a bit more respectable. And I can't thank you guys enough for the support so far. And continue to smash that like button and continue to help us get, you know, shared by the YouTube algorithms. But with all that being said, let's jump right in. I know it's hard to believe, but... There was actually a time where the only people in sports arenas wearing jerseys were the players. When you see photos from the 50s and 60s, fans look more like madmen execs than the more relaxed, comfortable look that we find today. I mean, after all, these were the days where people took plane rides in three-piece suits and hard bottoms. So coming to your local sporting event all suited and booted didn't really seem too out of the ordinary. It's not really clear when the shift officially happened, but many believe it was in the 80s with the introduction of his airness himself, Michael Jordan. And after all, it was Michael Jordan who popularized the sneakers as everyday attire. And before you say it, yes, I know, sneakers did exist before the days of Jordan, but until then, they were mainly relegated to working out. The number 23 jersey were among the first to explode into the routinely worn clothing option. And the NBA responded in kind, mass producing the gear to a generation of consumers who wanted nothing more than to express their fanhood. Digging through the photos of yesteryear, it seems as if the fan jersey movement kinda began in the 80s but it never really caught on in a mainstream way until more so in the 90s. The jersey boom wasn't an overnight phenomenon. Throughout the 80s, most fans hadn't quite picked up on it yet. And when you look at the crowds from then, jerseys were still pretty few and far between. I mean, you will find a few people wearing team colors, but most people were still wearing a typical 1980s garb that you would see in old school shows like Cheers and Family Ties. You really have to fast forward to the late 90s to see the appearance of jerseys as popular game attendee wear though. And again, we have MJ and the Bulls to thank for this. When Chicago introduced their now iconic black alternate uniforms with the pinstripes, fans loved them. So much so that the NBA finally realized that team jerseys were a great money making opportunity and began to mass produce them for the public. Rappers were also early adopters of the sports jersey as everyday trend wear. The two most iconic images of 90s rappers wearing jerseys, oddly enough though, were from hockey teams. Tupac, in the infamous photo of him spitting on reporters while rocking a Detroit Red Wings jersey and a matching bandana, and Snoop Dogg, who at the time was one of the hottest MCs in the game, being spotted in the Pittsburgh Penguins jersey, in his gin and juice video. Basketball jerseys soon became avant-garde as well. A legion of young men started to get in on the act, especially those in warmer weather states, embracing the ability to look cool in a sleeveless shirt while, well, still looking cool. It really made perfect sense. By then, sneakers had become a common part of modern lexicon. So matching them with a shirt from your favorite team or player seemed like a no-brainer. Learning from the Bulls pinstripe mania in the late 90s, the 2010 Cavaliers had printed more variations of jerseys than any other team in history, probably even up until today. 
Okay, maybe that's a bit hyperbolic, but every week it seemed like Cleveland played a nationally televised game in a different uniform. And at some point, along the NBA's path of obscure sport where the playoffs were shown on tape delay in the 1980s, to the marketing behemoth the league became by 2013, replica jerseys were a high item. And thus, the trend took off. NBA jerseys started becoming regular wardrobe for those attending games, and the young hype beasts of America began wearing them around town as well. But if we're gonna talk about jerseys though, then we gotta talk about Mitchell and Ness. Mitchell and Ness was a small Philadelphia boutique that launched a line of retro MLB apparel known as the Cooperstown Collection in the 80s. Few people had ever really even heard of the company, but then, in the late 90s, it signed a deal with the NBA, NFL, and NHL to make all officially licensed uniforms in all three of the major U.S. sports. At that time, it was still a pretty niche market. But in the late 90s and early 2000s, rappers began to stumble upon the brand. It started off small with a few MCs wearing a Warren Moon throwback jersey here or an Oscar Robertson classic there in a video. But next thing you knew, it was an epidemic. I don't know who exactly started it, but once it got started, it spread like a zombie plague. The store, according to Darren Rovell of ESPN, went from 2.8 million in sales in 2000 to 23 million in 2002. Fabulous resurrected NBA great Alex English's popularity 10 years after he retired with an authentic replica of his 87-88 Denver Nuggets jersey in a Lil Bow Wow video. Sammy Barr's 1947 Washington Redskins jersey became a tough find after Jay-Z wore it in his video for Girls, Girls, Girls. And once P. Diddy wore Wes Unsel's 1977-78 through 78 Washington Bullets jersey on the Carson Daly show, it too became a must-have. Rovell reported that Fabulous had more than a thousand throwbacks, and athletes began to jump in on the bandwagon too, with Kenya Martin reportedly dropping 2,000 in the store one day and claiming to have a 40 jersey collection. I even worked at a throwback shop back in the day when I was a kid, and I remember jerseys going for three or four hundred dollars each depending on the player and the team, and they were selling like dope. Jerseys were all over the place, in every music video, every school, every nightclub. It was the official look of an era slightly before streetwear became an established fashion genre. Never before had you seen as many egregious displays of grown, out of shape men <laughs> wearing sports jerseys. It was an excess that had been growing for years. But as the Buddha says, all things pass. The market could rise no further. It had become saturated and there was nowhere to go but down. Not to mention, styles had began to change too. By the mid-2000s, something new had been born out of the relationship with rap, skate, and punk rock, known today as streetwear. And with this came a desire to wear clothes a bit more fitted and true to size and fewer people wanted to be seen in super baggy clothes of the past. The throwback era, and with that, sports jerseys as a fashion trend was nearing an end. But that meant F all the sports fans. The lack of cachet for throwbacks among a major purchasing group didn't slow down the growth of jersey sales overall. I mean, you can go to any game today and still see them all over the place. Jerseys did kind of make a bit of a comeback every in everyday wear, even though not as quite as big as they once were before. But none of that means much to the sports teams selling them, though. Jerseys still remain a huge part of revenue for merchandising for teams, and more uniform options are available today than ever before. From the NBA to the NFL, most teams change their uniforms every few years while still playing in the older ones a few times a year just to keep them hot on the market. So with all this, mixed with fashion's often cyclical trajectory, 
Who knows? I mean, maybe they'll make another comeback as a streetwear staple. But what do you think? Hit us in the comment section and let us know. Also, if you made it this far, then obviously that means you like the video. And if so, then hit the like button for us. As we always say, liking and sharing the video is the best way to help us to continue to grow as a channel. And if you want to be updated every time we drop a new video, then hit the subscribe button and then the notification bell. This way you will be dinged whenever a new episode drops. But with that being said, I'm Nate the Great from TakeFlight214.com signing out. Until next time, peace.